The Phillies Mailbag is brought to you by Kevlar Builders and developers of AppSeekin. You can trust the team at Kevlar Builders on the job, whether it's your home or business that needs work. Give Kevlar a call. They do it all. 609-827-3853 at Kevlar Builders and Developers. Your future is in their plans. Of course, the Monday mailbag. We answer the questions on a Tuesday with Frank Close, 97.3 ESPN.com, part of Philadelphia.com. And, uh, Frank, a lot of Ryan Howard first base-oriented questions for your mailbag this week. Let's start with the big man, as everybody seems to be asking about Ryan Howard. Alex, ask you in the mailbag first, will Ryan Howard finish this season on the Phillies roster? Well, so far, this is a really tough question right now because things just seem seem to be getting worse and worse for Ryan Howard. Uh, My gut right now is still yes. Uh, I feel like that they've come this far. I I don't know that they would... Uh, cut him uh, while still a member of of uh, the, this 2016 Phillies. Uh, you know his contract, of course. You know is frequently rated one of the worst in baseball histories and history. And uh, he was batting 091 heading into yesterday's game. Now he's down to uh, the mid 080. Uh, so um, I think that they're they're going to let him hang around. My my guess is that he would lose a starting job before he would lose a roster spot. I think they might might be able to hang on to him for the rest of the season as a uh, bench bat. Uh, I think, per, you know, particularly if Cody Ashey comes back and he can sort of fill in a, as a backup infielder and outfielder, then they can kind of carry Howard. Uh, I just I just think that if they've come this far, they, they probably won't uh, outright cut him. Uh, but what they could do is they could lose, uh, he could lose his, his starting spot. Frank, do you think his production in this next week or so as a DH where he's going to get a couple chances, uh, you know, and then coupled with Joseph getting the chance to play more, could this be something that Pete Mackinnon is really monitoring to make a decision moving forward here? Well, when, well if we take a, 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 a few steps back to the, as the season was getting started, and, and it seemed like there was absolutely nobody blocking, uh, Ryan Howard was blocking absolutely nobody. Well, things have changed, and they've changed very fast. Uh, you know, Tommy Joseph was somebody that the Phillies put through waivers. Uh, he, you know, he could have been claimed by anybody, and nobody claimed him. And they basically said, here, here's a first base mid. Maybe you can, uh, you know, make something out of your career. And boy, did he surprise everybody. So uh, I, I think now it's, it's, it's not so much what Ryan Howard's going to do. I think it's what Tommy Joseph is going to do. So with the DH, Joseph is pretty much guaranteed to start for each of these Detroit games. So, uh, if and then the Phillies go to Minnesota in a few weeks, and they'll be in uh, Chicago. You know, so, so if he gets these at bats, and the job's him for for him to steal, I think. Uh, so, um, I think Joseph is going to determine whether or not uh, Howard plays. Not so much Howard determining whether or not Howard's going to play. So, Frank is Joseph then auditioning for the job, not necessarily trying out for it. Yeah, I think he's. I think he's auditioning for it. I think it's going to be a matter of uh, how well he does. Certainly, he helped his case last night with that with that home run. It's one of a couple hits. Uh, so, and he's and he's playing against righties now. So, I, I think we've already crossed the line from it being a straight platoon to to Joseph getting some starts against righties. And as long as he hits, I think they're just going to keep letting him play. And it's uh, unfortunate for Ryan Howard because. Uh, like I said, he really wasn't blocking anybody, but if, if Joseph is hitting, then he then now he is, and, and he's not going to play. Frank Close is with us on 97.3 ESPN. The Phillies' mailbag is open. Well, what kind of depth is there at first base in the organization? Well, Reese Hoskins is probably the, the best name in the Phillies' system. Uh, you know, earlier this year we talked about him because he had a 19-game hitting streak for, for AA Reading. And, uh, you know, 2016 is his first shot in Reading. Last year he split it between Class A Lakewood and High Class A Clearwater, and he had a very good season last year. He, he batted 319, and he, he drove in 90 runs with, with 17 home runs. So, so those are some pretty impressive numbers so far. Uh, but uh, Hoskins, I think, will need to probably give most of the, the, the year in, in AA before getting a look at AAA. Uh, he, you know, he could be down the, coming up uh, in the pipeline. He is listed among the Phillies' top prospects, although they've got a lot of prospects <laughs> and a lot that are ahead of him. Uh, but he might have a shot, and 
a lot of people like the name Brock Stassi. You know, he won the Eastern League MVP award last year at first base for the Reading Fight and Film. He's really come down to earth uh, as he's been moved up to Triple A. Uh, he's only batting 227 at this point. And uh, the, during this season, Stasi is going to be uh, be turning 27 years old, which is uh, up there in years for somebody batting 227 in AAA and trying to make uh, a major league appearance. It's just it's not looking too good for Stasi at this point. So, so right now, I would say Hoskins is the one that's a first baseman. However. We we know that the Phillies are kind of stocked with prospects in other positions. Uh, they might have a, a crowded outfield, for example, or if, say, both Jorge Alfaro and Andrew Knapp both make it as catchers and both prove that they belong uh, in the major leagues, well, then you might be looking at a position p- uh, change for either of those catchers or even somebody, you know, Dylan Cousins is is turning a lot of heads at, at double-A Reading, you know, with uh, 11 home runs th- thus far. I mean, maybe it's a situation where they don't have an outfield slot open for somebody like him. Well, then he ends up at first base. So, I think I think it's uh, I think the Phillies are in an enviable position that uh, they if if Joseph works out, that's great. And if he doesn't, uh, I think they can kind of come up with a first baseman even among some of the names that they already have. Frank Close is with us. The Phillies mailbag every week at 973ESPN.com. Follow Frank on Twitter at Frank Close with a K 973. Frank. Last night, Phillies manager Pete Mackinnon, he confirmed after the game that he basically pulled Odubel Herrera uh, because of lack of hustle. Now, I saw you tweet that, hey, maybe in this situation they just bring him down the chute, you know, uh, rip him a new one there and say, get back out there. Uh, But did you like the way Pete Mackinnon handled that situation last night? No, I didn't. I I felt that that Pete McCann could have easily chewed uh, Odubel Herrera out, pulled him in the tunnel outside of the, the sight line of the cameras, to say, come on, what's wrong with you? This is a tie game. We have a, we have a real shot to uh, beat the Tigers, and then I would have thrown him back out there. I, I think the I think the message that it sent uh, was more negative than positive. I, I think I think the players on the field didn't get the impression from that that oh boy, uh, you know we better make sure we're hustling because Herrera just got pulled from the game. I think the players instead reacted like oh shoot, they took our best hitter out of the game. What are we going to do? Uh, so I probably would not have made that same decision. Uh, I think if he in- indeed did, uh, you know, fail to hustle running to first base, I think it definitely needed to be addressed. You know, I do not. I don't think I'm not one who thinks that's acceptable. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it, I would have tried to go for the win here. I think the win would have been better for the Phillies. Uh, it, it, you know, and it doesn't mean you let him slide. Frank, it's no secret the Phillies have struggled with their corner outfield and. They've been rumored to be kicking the tires on Nick Markakis. I was at the Phillies-Braves game last Sunday. Uh, actually happened to sit next to a Braves fan and started picking her brain on, uh, were you happy that Freddie Gonzalez got fired? Yes, she said. And then I and she said, I really like Markakis. I, I think he's a good outfielder. Well, are the Phillies interested in him, and do they really like him? I can't totally get where this is coming from. Um, one thing about Nick Markakis, uh, you know, if, if he were a free agent to be, and the Phillies had no possible uh, need for him beyond this year, uh, and he wasn't going to be signed beyond this year, then they might have a shot. So, uh, you know, on on Sunday when Nick Cafardo of the Boston Globe pointed out that the Phillies could, were looking at Markakis, I was very very confused. Uh, he's scheduled to make ten and a half million next year. He's scheduled to make ten and a half million the year after that. And that doesn't even include the money that, he, that they're going to spend for the rest of this year if they, they get him. So it's a four-year deal. This is only year two for the Braves. I mean, he's a nice enough player, but, but he's only hitting two fifty-seven right now. And uh, I think he's giving you what David Lowe could give you. So I, I, I'm kind of puzzled by the, by the report that there's, that there's interest in Markakis. And it, I just think it makes sense because not only are you paying him money, but you're also clogging an outfield spot for years after this one, and it just doesn't make any sense. All right, Frank, uh, the Phillies do take on Tigers game two tonight, and we're going to see Jeremy Hellickson get the start here. And his name has also come up in some trade talks. Um, I know it seems a little premature, uh, but do you anticipate the Phillies looking uh, more into the Hellickson trade market or more into King Hellickson? Well, ever since we started chatting in spring training, I, I, I felt firmly that the, the goal with the, the trade for Hellickson and the trade for Morton was that they were going to let them both throw until about July, 
and at that point they'll take bids and they'll have somebody ready in the system to replace either of them. Now, unfortunately, the Phillies lost Morton. Um, you know, they were actually getting some interest in Morton, as, as some reports say. Uh, but uh, Helix said, I think, yeah, that if the Phillies are, are fully intending to, to listen to the market for Helix in and, and trade them, uh, chances are you, that the market really doesn't develop until you get to July, until you get to the trade deadline, uh, as, as teams are uh, more certain who's in it, who's not in it. But I think that's a situation where the Phillies could, could easily replace Helix in from somebody in their system back then when you get to July. And then I think that... Uh, you know, they could also bring back some, some prospects that can help them down the line. Now, you might say, well, the Phillies already have a lot of prospects. Well, they sure do, uh, but that's a uh, really good uh, problem to have, and I think they would love to make an even bigger problem of that. All right, that's tonight, Phillies and the Tigers, uh, and the Phillies lose game one of that series. The long ball was prevalent last night for Detroit, and we know, as we opened up with, with the conversation with Frank, Ryan Howard about the only guy who supplies the long ball consistently for this team. And uh, most people are looking to run him out of town. Tommy Joseph did hit a homer, and uh, we'll see what the lineup looks like here tonight as the Phillies take on uh, the Tigers, who will throw the 2011 AL Cy Young Award winner Justin Verlander against the Phils. Don't forget Frank's Mailbag every Monday, posted at 973ESPN.com. You can read more from Frank at Philadelphia. Dot com, part of sportstalkphilly.com. And listen to him every Tuesday here with the mailbag. Thanks, Frank. Thanks, guys.